Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome and thanks so much for tuning in. On today's episode of Convention Not, Ryan and I sit down and chat with Jay Schwong. Jay is a teacher, he's a father, he's a husband. Jay is a pretty big presence on Instagram. He's known as Shanghai Soul. Just like it sounds, Jay lives in Shanghai. Yep, he's tuning in from there today. Well, I think it's morning for him and the day prior for us. Anyways, the latter part of that handle is Soul, and this guy's a sneaker head. We talk quite a bit about his obsession, his grail. I won't give you it all away, but needless to say, this is a pretty unique interview. I promise, though, we don't just talk about sneakers. That wouldn't be fair to our audience or to our guests today, because Jay is so much more than a sneaker head. He's got such an amazing story. He was so kind to really open up and share his journey with us today. I think if you're interested in sneakers, that's a given. But more so if you're interested in the pursuit of, of a young man to, to really find himself and to return to his roots, um, I was inspired. I know you guys will be too. Sit back, relax, get to know Jay Schwong on Convention Up. I don't know why AirPods do that. that. I've had that happen to me too. Okay. Ryan is a dedicated EarPod user, and this is the only time I get him off of him. Is <laughs> and when we're recording, like you know, the closed ears in. But no, you you sound good. You you got. I can see you're in a little bit of like a a sound booth there. So yeah, that's better yeah, than the usual. Make shift something in here. <laughs> Jay, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna mess up your last name. Can you can you correctly give me your last name? Yeah, it's um, uh, uh, I'll phonetically help you guys. So, Wong W O N G, but add an S H in front of it. Schwong. Schwong. Okay. Yeah. I, I that probably wouldn't have been the first thing I said. So I'm glad I I had you hold my hand through that. So I'm just gonna jump right into this. I'm 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 giddy. I'm so excited, Jay, to sure. to have you here today. Um, I, I want to let you introduce yourself to our listeners, but I, I can give you at least a brief. This is, uh, this is Jay Shuang. Um, Jay is in Shanghai at the moment. It's, uh, I believe Monday morning for him, Sunday afternoon Monday for morning, us. Yep. Um, and I want to be real clear with everybody. This is, we've, we've corresponded a little bit over, you know, the social media world, but Jay was one of those awesome people that was kind enough to respond to my inquiries. And we're, we're going to kind of get to know each other through the episode, I hope, today. But, Jay, I'll, I'll hand it over to you so you can better introduce yourself. Yeah, um, my name is Jay. Uh, my IG handle is Shanghai Soul. Shanghai like the city, um, soul like the bottom of your shoe. Um, uh, I don't I mean... I'm just a regular, regular guy that likes sneakers. Um, you know, a, a social media is not my uh, way of making money. Uh, I'm a teacher um, at Shanghai American School. I teach fifth grade. I've been here for 10 years now. Um, yeah, I mean, but shoes have always been a, kind of like a side hobby of mine. And I started my IG page in like 2015, I think. I was like my first post, I had three likes and two of them were from my family members. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like blown up from there. I mean, I don't want to, I don't like to say that I'm an uh, influencer or a KOL, gotcha. um, but, you know, but I, I, I definitely, um, have a passion for kicks. Um, you know, I know, I know a couple of things about them. I have some friends that work in the industry and um, as I've gotten more and more involved in social media, it's kind of like helped me understand shoes uh, exponentially as well. So I'm, I'm still learning just like everyone else. We're happy you came on the show. We have these like fundamental tenets and for sure one of them is kicks. Um, I was actually in the warm up, Jay, before you came on, I was complaining because it's snowy here in Detroit and I have all of my 
shoes nicely cleaned and ready to go, but I haven't worn really a single pair of them in months. So I have to imagine that it wasn't 2015 when you started the Instagram that you, you got your first pair of ones or whatever your, your, uh, your, your, your preferred is, yeah. you know, I know uh, that's a lot yeah, of what you're doing now. But. Definitely my preferred uh, shoe of choice is the Jordan one, much like a lot of other people. Um, but it's funny because I was always, when I first started, I was always really into basketball shoes. Um, cause I, I still play to this day. I'm a big basketball fan fanatic. Mm -hmm. um, I watch, I play. And, um, right when I moved to Shanghai in 2011, um, my buddy that was out here and he was, he's a big sneakerhead too. And he was like, why do you have, why do you collect shoes that have no value at all he's like you just buy basketball you buy like kevin durant shoes and you bought like six colorways and these are not even that special like why do you do th why do you do that and i was like well because i wear i wear them because they're comfortable and these are the shoes that i like to go with and i like to have different um sure. different colors and i like to match the socks and then do all that and then i thought about it and i was like he's right like it's weird that i have eight pairs of a very generic basketball shoe. And well, then I was thinking, I was like, if I'm going to start a collection, which one would I go with? And I actually did it uh, with a practical um, like focus is because I know back then a lot of people were collecting shoes and then the foam would deteriorate after a couple of years, you know, and they were like, you know, this, you can't wear them anymore. The second you wear them, it'll crumble. It's, because just the the materials that they use to make certain uh, Jordans, yeah, they'll fall apart. So like Jordan threes, Jordan fours, the mm -hmm. foam and the midsole will crack, and and they're you can't do anything with them. And I was like, okay, which pair, which pair can I hoard for the longest and not have to worry about that? Whoa, that that's was, a practical approach. I'm impressed. <laughs> and that and that was the Jordan one because there's no foam in the midsole. Sure. There's no foam in the shoe. It's just pure rubber, rubber, rubber midsole with leather and the leather will crack. But um, if you take good care of it and you can still, I mean, that's the, that's the look nowadays. It's just the vintage look. A little so, patina I mean, on it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The older they are, like people are spending $3,000 on nine, on pairs from 1985. Like they're going, you know, to the OG right now. So, um, so that's, that's how I started with my ones collection. And it wasn't until I think 20, maybe like 2012, 2013, when I got my like it wasn't my first pair of ones I've ever bought. I bought them in high school and middle sure. school, but um, it was the first pair that I was like, okay, I'm going to really take care of these. And now I probably have about 95 pairs of ones. <laughs> okay. So you're kind of the, like, it's interesting how sneakerheads come to the market too. Oh. And, and I think a lot of people almost assume that sneakerheads are held over basically man children, but you're a great example of coming to it. I think we should, we should hold your example. Hi Jay, uh, coming to it as an adult, as like almost like a practical uh, uh, collection approach, you know, yeah, cause cause I, I did you know? buy something that would just disappear, disintegrate on me. Right. right? Like, I was like, this is right. That that would make me feel terrible. Like if I amass this collection and really right. all I have to do is just look at them. It's it doesn't sound though. like you're building a, a collection that you lost from yesteryear, you know, that came through as childhood that you either had or you always wanted, that kind of a thing, which I think a lot of you know sneakerheads get into it as adults yeah. that way. Um yeah. it's it's a pure, it's a pure kind of design thing. Are you that way about other stuff in your life? Or like are you a design fan or are you an art fan or um yeah. a fashion fan on other yeah I mean, kind of similar uh, I, I definitely would not consider myself a, a an art connoisseur um but i'm definitely into fashion um and and with the sneakers thing i mean i grew up uh, i was born in 83 so um i'm 37 right now and it's totally um i mean 90s basketball is like where it's at for me like that's mm -hmm. where that's the era where i grew up so yep. you know that whole nostalgia with east bay magazines and slam it definitely, magazines, yeah yeah still, there's roots there for like, sure so, so even though even though i it was my collection for ones didn't start like going back to hunt for pairs that i didn't have growing up i feel that way about 90s basketball shoes so like you know okay. fila grand hills 
Charles Barkley Air Maxes, yeah. like those Answers. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Like questions. <laughs> and and so that's the thing for me where um I definitely had that hardcore nostalgia factor when it comes to certain basketball shoes. There's this really cool kind of wave that's going through comedians and sneakers right now. So I'm not sure if you're a comedy fan, Jay, but um specifically like Gerard Carmichael um they're like uh uh some of the like you know rogan joe rogan crew mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. a lot of them are, are sneaker heads and they're bringing forward like uh you know these really cool pairs from um guys like the shoe surgeon who i'm sure you're familiar with yep, yep, yep. um our, our, our listeners if you, if you haven't ever you know if you really want to kind of understand the the way and i think the shoe shirt shoe surgeon even runs a school for learning to um specifically work on ones in in different ways um but it's cool to see how that just like weaves its way through the fabric of time right from somebody who um you know remembers east bay catalogs which includes all three of the guys on this show for sure um all the way down to you know this like high designer end of things that continue to get on tv um or maybe it's it's streaming networks now not not tv really you know so it's such a cool part of it so let's let, let can i ask like a couple of questions mike i yeah, know i'm like totally right taking now. over the way no no that just that go i'm so, so excited and interested in all this that I, i'll be a fly on the wall for now keep going there's don't worry i'll get it people there's two groups that i want you to know so much about who feel about and get to share your your collection with you one is your family so i want to know like what if, if you're fortunate enough to still have your parents around either your mom or your dad pick one of those two people um and like you know what do they think about your collection and then two is like your students like how does that filter its way through um in the way that you're able to to lead a classroom every day um because yeah. that's for sure you know part of of what you do i'm sure yeah um so i'll start number one um with my family both my my mom and dad um are still around you know thank god uh they are both living in taipei taipei taiwan okay um it's funny because growing up like i said i was a big basketball shoe person like i would just buy basketball shoes um, and I think in high school, I probably had maybe 10 pairs. And that back then was like, that's a lot. That's a lot like, for a high school kid. Yeah, kid. yeah, that's a lot. But it wasn't, it wasn't anything, uh, it wasn't anything expensive in the, in the sense that like they were worth a lot of money. I mean, yeah. obviously, you know, being able to, to, I was lucky enough to have my mom, you know, be able to afford basketball shoes for me every basketball season because I played on the team and everything. But mm -hmm. um, they they weren't like grails, you know. Like, yeah, they weren't yeah. I don't. I don't remember yeah. anyone having shoes in high no. school. Even if you had those shoes, people weren't talking about it, right? No. Like some people might have had some roached out ones in their closet, but in high school, no one was talking about it no, yet. For right? sure. Okay. For sure. Okay. So so I definitely had basketball shoes. Um, and and my mom used to always make fun of me because she's like, "How many feet do you have?" Right? Like, sure. You know, what's the deal? Um. My dad never, never really said anything about it. My mom used to get on me a little bit for, for having, um, you know, like eight or nine pairs, but it's funny because I didn't really start my collection. I didn't really start my collection until I moved to Shanghai. And that's when I was already an adult. That's when I was 27. Okay. So my parents never have really seen the full extent of oh, okay. my, uh, my, my, uh, my hoarding <laughs> they, live they live far enough away that they don't come because that's going to be one of the questions that comes up later in the show fair warning yeah. is like how do you store because listen right. for sneakerheads especially adult sneakerheads you know that space yeah, I mean, is size 10 size 10 and a half like that i'm a size 10 10 and a half like those boxes are not small no 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 so yeah my, <laughs> my my parents have never seen the full extent of my problems but 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 they know they know of it <laughs> sure so, okay same for because, me because when i go back to taipei like i'm always on the hunt i like i'll you know um yeah, I mean, you I'm get sure we'll 10 new pairs of shoes <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, they're i'm like, sure we'll talk about it later but like during the pandemic i was in taipei for nine months like that was not planned oh um, stuck so, in taipei basically yeah stuck, yeah stuck in taiwan for nine months and so um during that time you know I gotta get shoes, man. Like you I gotta do just, something. <laughs> you gotta do something, right? I mean, I don't know if you were you getting your ball on. Like you, I don't know what you could do. You definitely could still shop. Yeah, though. the, yeah, the shopping so, world didn't stop. Yeah, exactly. I haven't so, played in a year. 
I don't know if you're able to play where you are, Jay, but I haven't played in an entire year. I was actually just, it was two weeks ago today was the last time I played. Um, so, I mean, I, I know we'll get into it in detail. I've been playing, things are open here. So, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll definitely share my experience about, you know, how COVID has hit this part of Asia and, and, and all of those things. But, um, yeah, so, so number one, my parents don't really know how bad it is. Like they, they see me in like short spurts and they're like, my mom will be like, you know, great. Like your wife, uh, that's my, that's my wife's name. Her name is Grace. Okay. Like Grace must, must hate it. I would hate it. Stop. Oh, yeah, no love, just kind of ridicule. <laughs> yeah, stop doing that. Like, stop <laughs> doing that to her. Like, all this stuff. And my dad is just like, oh, your collection is pretty cool. Like, um, yep. nice. how many followers yeah. do you have on Instagram now? I want to see. Like, That's awesome. Yeah, so your so, dad so, is actually kind of supportive. And, and he's into it because you're into it. He's not. He's not against it. Let's just put it that way. He's not against it. I love um, that. I love yeah, that. And my mom is like, you know, you, you, that's too much. Like, you're out of control. You oh, yeah. It could be baby clothes or something, right? Like, I mean, she's just being super practical. And here's right. here's sure, your dad right. who's like, wait a minute. People from Hawaii are calling you to talk to you about <laughs> your shoot? Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's funny because I, I have a similar. It surprises me sometimes the interest that my dad has taken in certain things later in my life, you know, because totally. earlier totally. on it was, it was a lot more kind of like discipline and not so much entertained by the things I was totally. entertained by. But totally. yeah, when I see those glimmers nowadays, I'm like, Oh, he just wants to be a kid too again. You know? Yeah. The first time, the first time I got my tattoo, um, I came back to visit my parents and my mom, the first thing she said, she like hit me across the back and was like, why'd you do that? <laughs> She's like, why'd you do that? And I was like, what do you mean? It's my body. She's like, no, it's my body. Like, no, no, no. Like, yeah. 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 You don't do any of that. <laughs> and then I go home and my, and my mom was like, my mom was like, look at what your son did. And my dad took out his cell phone. He's like, that's cool. Let me get a photo. <laughs> of <it."> like, yeah. <laughs> that's that's the dream, dude. Doing so stuff that our dads think exactly are cool. It. That's exactly it. Um, yeah. Um, but then to go back to Ryan's uh, second point, which is how it um, kind of like filters into my classroom. Um, I don't think there's a single person at the school who doesn't know that I'm the shoe guy. That's nice. Okay. Um, what grade are you, Jay? Sorry to like, cut you off. I teach fifth grade. They're, they're fifth grade. 10, okay. Yeah. They're like nine okay. to 11 years old. Yeah. Sure. Um, and I, I work at a, at a school that's pre-K three up until seniors. So um, high school seniors. Oh. So they're from three years old all the way until 18. So it's a fully, you know, middle elementary, middle high school, all on the same campus. Uh, we have about like, I want to say maybe like 15, 1600 students. Okay. I mean, so, not that big yeah. for that, that many grades. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it's about, it's about like a hundred, 110 per grade, something sure. like that. Um, but, you know, I help teachers at the school acquire shoes, um, you know. You are uh, the shoe. I mean, like, I'm the, I, I'm the shoe guy. I got to hear guy. more about this. Like, how how long you've been at that school for? Because, I mean, like, what, I got other buddies that, you know, that teach. My wife is a teacher. Yeah. Um, and my wife has learned, like, yeah, no, I, she wears, she's um, K through five. So mm -hmm. my wife has very much learned that the way she dresses can be entertainment to the kids. And if you got their attention, that's, that's two, at least two thirds of the battle. Um, totally. So yeah, totally. she's got, you know, she's got her sneakers and like the, the fashionable girls at school, they know, they know, yeah, like, they know. no, Miss Senate's got like, she's got yeah. her Stan Smith's and she's got like, yeah. so dude, no, I, but no. I can't imagine. I mean, the, the, how big sneakers are now and like jay man yeah you're super humble dude but you're anybody with 90 plus pairs of what like your collection's absurd man so i'm just curious at how like how did it first you just started wearing them into school like is it pretty uh, formal or no uh, like for for us uh for us for the teachers i mean like i'm wearing like a undefeated sweater plus khakis and okay like, Jordans right now so it's like it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty casual um okay. I don't I don't um 
I have like photos of Jordans that kids have drawn and they've given to me. So like that's hanging in my room. I have like uh, my, the poster that hangs outside my classroom. That's like my little bulletin board right outside my room is um, Bugs Bunny doing the Michael Jordan rare oh, air yeah. pose. Where he just oh, spreads yeah. his yeah. Yeah. And it says, um, and it says, um, hair air like h-a-r-e yeah right? like oh yeah no um, i remember that and it says, <laughs> why and it, instead of saying why uh why roman you can fly it says why hop when you can fly right like it's just mm -hmm. i got um i actually have like sneakers in the room um you know just like single pairs just dangling and stuff so the kids like they they know that like once they come into my room it's like we're talking hoops and we are and if you oh, have man. new shoes to bring them in like show me the kids in my room, I mean, they come in and I would say by by January, half of them are wearing like Nikes or Jordans really? or something. Okay. And all they want to do is just show me and be like, Mr. Schwong, look what look what I got for Christmas, look what I got for my birthday. Oh my god. Um dude. I mean, I don't want like it's weird because I don't wanna I never say like, "Hey, you guys should get some new shoes." Like, yeah, I would never yeah, yeah. influence them to be like, "Go, go, ask your parents for new kicks," right? Like, or sure. you know, God forbid, like, shame a kid for wearing some yeah, like, yeah, beat shoes, right? Like, I would never, ever, ever do that. But I, th I mean, I think just by natural means, like we all grew up like that too, right? Like, you look up mm -hmm. to someone and you just want to like dress like them or talk like them or act like them and um you know i try to do it in a way that i will show like if i pick up something new I, i'll bring it to school and i'll do like a show and tell and i'll like show them um sure. i picked up a pair of dunks uh not too long ago they're the, they're um with collaboration with a company in europe called civilist it's a skate shop and they change colors they're a heat pattern they're a heat oh, transfer yeah so, yeah so they're all black, but then when you wear them on foot or if they get exposed to some heat, um, you can see like the kind of like the heat wave pattern that starts showing. And I showed oh, that dog, I put a candle next to it and I showed it to them and their eyes were like, what is that? That's magic. Like, how does that happen on shoes? <laughs> by now you heard my voice for probably long enough but i'm coming at you to thank you for tuning in today and i want to remind you that we build this community because of people like you we've been doing it for a couple years and there's a lot of episodes out there and i'm hoping that you might go out find one and share it with somebody that's how we spread the convention not word and from both the feedback of our guests and the many listeners that we get to hear from, it really is something that people like to, li to listen to. And so I'm asking you to help us out. Share the show. Hit whatever button on your device. Send it. Appreciate you. Back to the episode. Um, so, I'll, I mean, I just like to share it with them. I share my passion with them. They know that that's what I'm about. Um, you know, it's funny because I also coach the varsity basketball team. And, and I want to uh, okay. talk about that a little bit, too, because yeah. I have certain connects um, in the shoe, like I said, in the shoe uh, business out in Shanghai. And my buddy at Converse, he sends me shoes to give to the kids. And that's so amazing, I don't know if you guys yeah. have seen the videos that I've done, um, but I've done it twice now where um, not this past winter, but the winter of 2019 before, you know, um, COVID hit, um, I dressed up as the Grinch. I was going to say I, the Grinches, right? I did see, yeah. I didn't see the video, but I saw the picture you shared of yeah. that. And oh so I dressed Christ. up as the Grinch and then they had to like shoot for them. And then um, we did a little like giveaway activity and then they all walked away with brand new basketball shoes that we wore in our tournament so it's like we, it's just like just to bring it's just team bonding and to bring like unity to the team and like let them know that hey sure. you're not getting this because i have connections you're getting this because like 
first of all, it's it's not like I'm going out and spending my own money on them. Because yeah, that would be incredibly expensive. I mean, you know, <laughs> right. I would love to do something like that, but it's the fact that um, you know, we want to bond together. And you're on this team. Like, yeah, you're on this team. This we're is, all one. This, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I've I've been able to do that two years in a row for the high school team. Um, I don't know if that's going to continue next year. I keep telling the kids, I like don't expect free kicks every year. Um, Damn, no, but, dude. That's, I yeah. can't even imagine. I mean, when we got our jerseys, like the normal stuff you expected right. to get, but a pair of, sh- I can say I, I played three sports year round eight until I was 16, 17. I never got a pair of shoes. Never. Not yeah. a single oh, time really? of any sport. No. We got like, shoes. We, we, my team got shoes. Even if but, we I mean, had, I think like, it was it just happened to be because it was like the school that we were at. Yeah. Um, maybe. Right. They were convert. They were some bunk ass converse, though. Yeah. You weren't excited about them. They, they weren't were, unique. They weren't hard to the get. The 90s you know? era of team shoes, right? We're yeah. the, all the same age demographic. They were some, um, you know, I, I don't even know. They were probably named Converse Team One. Yeah, Tom, right? Converse Team Star One. You the know. lowest tier. They were the lowest. Well, they, they came were, with bags, yeah. warm ups. So proud. So, okay. So let's talk a little bit. We could go on and on and drone on and on. Um, and if we had any listeners left by the end, Jay, we would talk all about sneakers for like four hours. <laughs> but we should probably talk a little bit about what and how. Um, I, I take it that that you didn't just wind up there uh, teaching fifth grade. Um, in fact, I, I, I understand that from you know a little bit of, of what we understand about each other. But let, let's take it a little bit back about like your youth because it's pretty exciting to kind of hear about the way you, you grew up and and you know before you get those connections and as you get those connections. Let let's go there. What how, how does that start? Uh, yeah, so I was born in um, in uh, Rockville, Maryland, um, and I was there until I was three. Uh, and then I moved to New Jersey, um, northern Jersey, like a uh, Paramus area, really close to New York City. Sure. Um, yeah, my, my, my dad worked in the city. He worked um, for the largest uh, Chinese newspaper in the U.S. It's called United Daily News. And it's, okay. um, he worked for the newspaper. He was the uh, editor-in-chief. And then my mom worked for what is what used to be uh, what is now AT and T, but it used to be Bell Atlantic. Sure. Um, out in New York, yeah. And then um, I was there in Jersey until I was eight, and then I moved to Taipei because the paper headquarters was in Taiwan. Cool. And so, because of my dad's work, uh, we all moved back to Taiwan. Um, and then from fourth grade until senior year graduation, so about nine years, I was in Taipei American School. So it's a international school. Um, much like the school I'm at right now. Yep. Um, and it was also like kindergarten through high school, um, all English speaking. You had to have a, you know, foreign passport in order to attend the school, all English curriculum. And then I would say like 90% of the kids go back to the States for college. Yeah. And okay. so all growing, all throughout, grow, um, you know, my childhood, I pretty much lived um, in Taipei. Yeah. Well, I mean, from like, from, you know, born from, from when I was born until nine, I was in the States. And then from <laughs> nine until 18, I was back um, in Taipei. And that's uh, where I, you know, going back to college back in Maryland, I went back to, um, I, I attended a uh, UMBC University of Maryland, Baltimore County, um, a super small school. And the probably biggest thing that they're known for is upsetting Virginia in March Madness, I think like three years ago. Nice. Oh, they in the first round and, yeah. the before, yeah, and then right. Virginia came back great. next year. That's sweet, dude. Good that for you. Proud, time. proud well, alum, proud alum. Yeah. That was, that was the first time a 16 seed beat a one seed. Sure. Pretty epic. It was epic. It was insane. <laughs> I went crazy. I was running through the hallways at school. People were like, what? <laughs> Oh, sure, because it's the middle of the day. It's it yeah. in the yeah. middle of the day for you, yep. too. And yeah. I wore a T-shirt out. I remember, um, like, it was on like, the weekend. I wore a T-shirt. I wore a UMBC Retrievers T-shirt. That's the mask. I wore a UMBC Retrievers T-shirt out. And someone asked me, how was I able to get that made? 
And I was like, no, man, this is from, this is OG stuff oh, right here. Dude, <laughs> I honestly, I would love, all right, so. I'm really glad that we're talking about that game because uh, before we chatted today, I don't, Jay, Ryan and I are Michigan State grads. And Ooh, Maryland, sorry. Maryland beat the tar out of Michigan State today. And I was like, I have a feeling this dude might have gone to Maryland. Like, I just, yeah. I see, I saw it on your handle, you know? So I was like, I wonder what his Maryland connects are. But so, I, I, let's talk way more about UMBC. I mean, that good for them. Good for them. Yeah. So, so UMBC, I was there for undergrad and then, um, I knew, right. I knew in high school that I was going to be a teacher. That was really, I was, okay. I was student teaching. Cause I mean, I grew up in that environment. My mom worked at the school. She wasn't a teacher. She was actually the CFO at, okay. at the school. And so, um, you know, I was just around it all the time. Um, and when you work at an international school, the community is really your family. Like yeah. you see the teachers right. out, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not a, a lot of people compare it to like a DOD school, like department of defense where you're like on the base. It's not yeah, really no. like that. Yeah. Um, it's more like a part of the community. Like you're just, you see the teachers out, you see your classmates out. Cause you're really, yeah. you're really, it's not isolated, but you're very like, you're the American school. And then, you're in a foreign country. So my you're family, really hanging Jay, my, out with my yeah. sister taught at an international school in Santiago, Chile. Um, oh, okay, I, yeah, I grew yeah. up in the Middle East. My parents taught uh, at a variety of these. So I fully appreciate what you're saying. Like, even if the husband isn't a teacher, like he he's totally. a coach or something, totally. you know, like exactly. it's a very exactly. tight knit right. community, yep. usually in a kind of foreign, semi foreign place. Yeah, totally. So um, I knew from an early age that I wanted to become a teacher. So um, at UMBC, my undergrad was psychology. And then I went to College Park for grad school. Um, and uh, I got my teaching certificate with master's. And then it was funny because my first year, my entry meeting with my professor at College Park, she's like, why do you want to become a teacher? I was young i was stupid i i gave the most one equals the other it's okay Jay. i'm sure it was real brash I, and confident. i gave the worst answer i mean i <laughs> came off so arrogant it was <laughs> awful because she's like why do you want to become a, a teacher and i said you know i want to i want to go overseas i want to go overseas i want to become an international school teacher so i want to put in my time in the states and then i'm going to go overseas as soon as i can I'm like why is that why what you know what is your draw for being being an international school teacher, I said, because I want to go to Phuket and I want to drink my ties in my summer and I want to enjoy and I want to enjoy my time off. And they, and she just looked good, at me. Good goals. Like, you just can't tell them that. Yeah, you, can, you just, just can't ooh, tell them that. She just looked at me and was like, where's Phuket? <laughs> <laughs> turns out, uh, turns out not what they're looking for. For uh, Were seen you, the already, beach? you already in? Yeah, I got in. I got You're already in. in so, yeah. <laughs> but wait a minute. Um, hold but, on real yeah. quick. Because, Jay, what you're saying right now, it's really important to point out. You do have to kind of do your time. And like, yes. I hate to say it, but like normal schools and, and right. you don't just you don't just go and teach at one of these no. international schools straight 100%. out, of, even with a master's degree. Right. Like 100%. you got to. OK, so but I, I, taught, I like the confidence. I like that. No. So I taught <laughs> I taught uh, in Baltimore. Uh, not not in the inner city, but um, in the suburbs, uh, in an area called Columbia, Ellicott City. Um, and then I taught there for uh, four years. I taught fifth grade. Um, and then I know that at most of the big international schools, bigger ones, um, they ask for about, you know, at least like probably like four to five years of yeah. teaching experience with like good recommendations and, and all of those things. Uh, so I attended, a, after I put in my four years, I was, you know, I just wanted to test the waters. I wasn't like dead set on, on moving yet. Um, cause I, I really enjoyed working at my school. I wasn't like, it's, a, it's, it's all or nothing international school. Yeah. Um, and so I just, I, I went to Boston, attended a job fair and, um, ISS. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know. Oh yes. man, you my know. wife has been to him. I I do know. Yeah, 
<laughs> ISS search. Yeah, you definitely know. And so um, went to a job fair. It was crazy because at the job fair, I just felt I felt like I had a leg up. And it was weird because I, I, I only had, you know, four, four years under my belt. I was not I was not seasoned like some of the other teachers there. Some of them had been teaching in the States, you know, for 15 plus years, 20 years. But I bumped into my high school principal uh, in the elevator. Wow. Um, and, and he was like, Jay, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know, it was just like we started chatting. He was like, well, let's talk. I just high school e econ teacher was there. Um, he used some words that shouldn't be mentioned um, publicly. He, <laughs> he was like, I'm way too effing old to be here. If you're here now, like, I need to get out while I can. Um, yeah, and so I felt like really at home. I felt yeah, like man, I felt that's really, a nice boost. Really that's a nice yeah, boost. Yeah, I felt really comfortable. And then um, what helped me land the Shanghai job was I had an interview with uh, the international school in Beijing. And he said, you know, you're younger than what we're looking for. Yeah. But what you yeah. provide is something that other people can't, which is you, gradu you graduated, you went through the ranks at a similar, almost, almost the same. Right, because even though they're not affiliated, it's pretty Taipei, sweet to have your yeah. career, your yeah, your yeah. alumni come back and want to teach yeah. there. Like that's and a, so they're like, even though star. it's not the same, it's not the same institution, but it's you know, it's the same. It's it's the same kind of education that you're gonna get, and and you know, the parents, the faculty, they're gonna eat that up. The kids especially. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when I went into my uh, interview with Shanghai, they asked me. You know what do you think you bring to the table and i just like i was like I, you know I, I didn't graduate from shanghai american school but i am a product of the same education and you know this is where it's gotten me and you know i can relate with the kids i can relate with the parents i can relate with the faculty i can relate with you know yeah. the people like just the the groundsmen even because like i grew up in that whole environment you know for nine years and the guy the you know at then the head of school is like Okay, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty. Yeah, good man. No, answer. that's a good much better than grad school, right? Yeah. Much better than the uh, Phuket to yeah. Mai Tai reference. Yeah, and so um, he and so you know, 2011, I moved out here, and I've been here for 10 years now. Wow, you. I mean, that's actually. It's it's not a straight line by any means, but like you've been pretty efficient. I'm trying to think. Yeah. So what you, you know, grad school finishes up your 24 ish. You put in uh, let's see. four uh, years. When'd you move uh, back to, when'd you move back to Shanghai? Late twenties? Yeah. 30? 27. 27. Okay. Damn. I mean, dude, 27, when you showed up, you were the youngest teacher at that school. eh? Yep. Wearing, you weren't wearing sneakers year one, were you? Uh, no, I was not. I was in a full, I was in a full tie, tucked in. Dressed in the part. Yep. For sure, pleated, man. Pleated khakis, for sure. Yeah. Rightfully so. And like, I'm sorry, but there is a, there's a, a really nice, um, like ebb and flow there. A little give and take, right? Like, sure. You showed up, you got all that confidence, you know, you deserve that job. But then when someone gives you, you know, that opportunity, you know, it's okay to just dial it back a sure. little bit, yeah. you know, and you're still that guy, but I'll, I'll share that part of myself with everyone. Eventually they don't, they don't all need to know yeah. how excited I am to be here. How awesome right. this is. And exactly. And, I fashioned myself and, as a Jay Schwong. Uh, yeah. I also made the pivot to, to, it first started with ones. Straight up black on black ones a little bit here and there. Um, nice. But now I just really wear like sneakers. And um, now, you know what has also helped people in our um, our demographic, Jay, is the pivot from like the khaki to the like jean cut. Not It's not a jean. And I assume this is, you know, probably, uh, probably a similar style, right? You like don't have formal, to wear khakis though. with sneakers yeah. anymore, right? They yeah. don't have to have that front crease. Now you can wear that like 
kind of gene cut relaxed. And so right. now That's I'm actually, I'm going to Minneapolis tomorrow and I was just, uh, I was deciding whether I wanted to risk bringing a pair of J's or not because it might snow on Tuesday. Mm. So I think I decided, no, I have a yeah. couple <laughs> pair, I have a couple pair of like winter time ones, but they're not, they're not that fly just to be honest, you know? Right. Um, oh, see, this is like, I, I am not, I am, I have like, some love and respect and appreciation for sneakers, but I just don't, I have no knowledge base like you guys do. So I am just so enamored constantly by like how deep and like these sorts of conversations. I just love to be like, wait a minute, y'all are talking about that little piece of foam on threes. And you're like, yeah, yeah, you can't threes, man. They just, they wrote, you know, they don't not worth them. it. I'm just like, what you guys you're speaking this very 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 it's not even that much of a subculture anymore but i love uh i love to learn about it and like As just an to adult, see how excited you guys get just to like have someone else to talk to about it like that's it's not that fun to just have a collection you look at yourself all the time what's up y'all it's mike from the show are you one of those people that just hits play, listens, and then moves on to the next thing? It's totally cool, because I'm one of those people too. But through this podcast, I've really grown to appreciate that all those reviews, those thumbs up, those comments, those stars, even the nastiness, it actually helps. It helps a lot. So don't be shy. Don't be scared. We've been called bad names before. Please comment, review, share the episodes if you don't hate them. What I'm getting at is feedback is essential to our program. And it's a big reason why Ryan and I do this. Not forcing you, just saying. It's out there. Hit that button. Thanks, y'all. Yeah, I did. I didn't want to cut you off earlier, but I did have to say, like, dude, the fact that you have, you know, you're leading, you're leading young people. Um, they don't. No one's making them wear better shoes. No one's. You, you could be an asshole, and they wouldn't be wearing nicer shoes. You know what right. I mean? But no, yeah. like the way that you are about it, the way that you're open about it, like Jay. That's that's why we're really talking today. It's not because I know about sneakers. It's because I found your feed. And like visually, it caught me. But then I, I kept reading your comments. I kept reading how, sorry not to get you know too heavy with you here. I know we just met, but I'm like, this is like a really thoughtful dude. Like this is someone who is actually interested in engaging with this world. Because in my experience, that sneaker world isn't like, hey, I want to hear what everyone thinks. You know, I yeah. feel like a lot of people yeah. want to make sure everyone knows what they think. You know, but right. you've just I've always been like, damn, this dude, like he doesn't have a, he doesn't seem to have an angle. And everyone else oh. showing these pics, showing this kind of collection has a very different attitude about it. No. You know, and, I was you know, drawn because I don't it. have really I don't have a dog one. in the race. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm not getting paid by Nike. I'm not getting like paid by anyone like this is like my my Instagram doesn't. I don't get I don't get seeded stuff because of my Instagram. Like it's just I don't I mean to be honest with you, it's I don't know how I got to 40k because I don't I don't do giveaways. I don't you know what I mean? Like I don't do any of those gimmicks or but I don't you get... en you engage, bro. Like could you and I know you don't we won't talk about the social media a whole, whole lot here, but you you do provide your commitment. I mean, are you like, do you have a little bit of a discipline about it? Are you like, I'm going to make a post every day? Are you just really that you post it when you're looking at them in the morning and you feel like um, it? I post probably like twice, twice a day. Okay. And right now I'm, I'm in this like, and the thing is, is that all my routines with posting, it's so like, it's weird because it's just something I do. Like, I'm like, oh, in the morning, I'm going to post about if you look at my feed recently, it's every other feed because every other picture, because in the morning I'll post about um, one of my Jordan ones. Okay. 
Um, and then, and then you'll see at night, which is my night, your morning, you'll be like, oh, okay, that wasn't because I've been numbering them. I'll be like, oh, this is like the 30th pair in my collection that I want to talk about. Okay. Today. Okay. But then like the nighttime post will just be like a random thing that's like coming out in China or coming out in Shanghai. And, and, and so Not necessarily your, your collection, but just yeah similar content. Okay. Yeah. And so like my, my thing right now is that everyone wants to know what's coming out in, in China first, because we haven't had the delays in, in releases that the states have. Okay. Because, ah, because yeah, of, they're all because, being made there, right? I mean, because, yep, because okay. of the weather, because of COVID, because sure. they're being made here. So we get, so we haven't had those delays where it's like, oh, they were supposed to come out February 1st. They're actually dropping March 30th now. Like, what's up with that? And mm-hmm. um, like, we get them when they're supposed to come out. And, and it's, it's crazy how people like, like dude, you must be inundated that. with, people looking for your content people that don't just aren't i'm i'm sorry i mean we this is a podcast ryan and i get you know we make no money off this but we obviously get entertainment out of this but mm-hmm. dude if you got forty thousand followers i can't help but assume thousands of them are bugging you constantly for a hookup where you know what i mean like that's got to be get, so annoying, right? Like, yeah, man, can really I just share my I, collection? Can't these are mine? They're not for you. Like, don't bother I, me. Because, because I mean, the new the new wave, and you know, Ryan, you, you might you might see this a little bit more often. Is that the new wave is a lot of resellers now? Yeah. Right. So everyone just trying like it's the same with cards. You guys probably noticed like the whole card. People are going on IG live and opening up packs of cards. Just yeah, it's crazy. Money. Like oh, it's like I'm just learning about people. that. Yeah, you know what I'm, I'm just, just like learning about up. that. It's insane. It's mad. Like, like baseball that. cards. Like yes, basketball cards are back. It's the craziest thing, Michael. Like it's, new ones. Oh though. yeah. Like they're One coming of my out with new cards. Oh yeah. man. Okay. So there's two things. I want to get a tip on two things. And, and Jay, I'm not sure if you know about the second thing, um, but the first thing is cards and card opening parties, right? One of my, yeah. um, pro- probably a lot of your kids' age uh, that you teach. Um, and one of my colleagues just tell me about where kids purchase cards, right? Or they purchase packs and then they're yep. open live and then yep. they send them out. And then there's another thing called Top Shots. You guys know about Top Shots? I've heard of it. I've heard of so that. Top what shots, is it? We have a friend who uh, coaches in the league. His name is Steve. He's been on the show, uh, Jay. And so I was talking to him the other day and he's told me, and so this likewise is no official sponsor, but basically Top Shots is digital, like ownership of digital um, clips of a dunk or a steal or something Mm -hmm. like this. Um, And so I don't know how the licensing works. I'm not sure that you could license your card out to somebody else, but you're the person who owns that, you know, numerical part of uh somebody making a steal and performing a layup or something like that isn't so. that crazy it's like it's how so crazy that that blows my mind i mean um yeah so the the whole the whole re reseller thing is more like people reaching out to me not asking me to buy my shoes but they're more asking me to like hey can you send me like 15 pairs and we can work together on this and i was oh, like okay nah like that's i'm not interested in doing that and and that's yeah. not my thing and and i have a full-time job with a with a baby at home like i don't have the time to go out and come if i came back home with like 17 pairs of shoes my <laughs> wife would lose her mind that's a like, lot of explaining gonna... <laughs> just to sneak a couple pairs a month in. i'm with you jay i'm with you i have a uh i have a um I don't know that I would call him a mentee, but like a, a kid who I've been working with, his name is Tyler and his uh, Instagram handles uh, Purge Kicks. And he sells like legit, I think he sold a thousand pairs of shoes in the last 12 months. And so yeah. he's one of those reseller kids. Yep. And it's a cool little business for a young person. I really yeah. think it is. Well, I, and I and um, I totally get it. You know, it's it's funny because a lot of people that have hit me up are, are younger people, 20, mm-hmm. like in college or in high school that are like, hey, can you can you send something my way and, and then we can sure. like sell, I'll give you a cut. And I'm like, you know, just, <laughs> just from shipping alone. Cause it's expensive getting things to mm. the States from Shanghai. It, oh, it yeah. costs, it costs probably if I were to ship a pair of shoes, let's say a size 11, it would probably cost me 70 bucks. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like, think that's part of the exclusive exclusivity of what we're into, though, is that there's not a lot of like cheat codes around it. There's a lot of, you know, I, you know, retros or I'm sorry, retros, uh, um, fakes are a thing. And yeah. so, you know, there's there's that. And that's a whole different market. But like there's not a lot of cheats around sneakers, you know. No, there um, isn't. No, I, I'm and especially especially to get pairs in bulk. Right. Like I like my cheat code would be my friends that work at Nike. That would be sure. a cheat code, right? Because they're going like, to give oh, you a couple pairs. I can give you your size, right? Yeah, yeah, um, like one, like one maybe pair, two pair. Yeah. yeah, one, one pair, pair right? right? Like, and so like that would be, I guess, you could call it a cheat code. How but, do those dudes get twenty pairs of a new release? How does that happen? I bots. mean, I see those posts. Is that um, what they're bots doing? Bots and then backdoor deals with kids yeah. at um at stores, yeah. out the back yeah. door. A lot of a lot okay. a lot of bots, right? Like, size room. Yep. And so, like, they'll just scoop up everything from like a size seven to a size twelve, and they'll buy one. Do you one think of it's size. way harder to get a job at Foot Locker now than it was twenty years ago? Like, what sort of what sort of screens are they running on people? It's now, weird. Dude? Because, so I, it's funny because in college I worked at Finish Line, and that was <laughs> there you go. That was in that was in two thousand six, right? So two thousand six, I worked at Finish Line, and um, it was. It wasn't anything like it like you had to be there yeah. a couple of years uh, or like a couple of you had to pull rank in order to like get some of the limited stuff but you for sure were able to get it mm -hmm. like i remember it's a pair that's coming out um i think this year end of this year is the flint sevens it's like a purple and gray oh yeah purple and gray jordan seven and that mm -hmm. was the first pair that dropped when i was at finish line and at that time like i said i wasn't into Jordans. I was into basketball yeah. shoes. I was like, oh, new mellows are coming out. Everyone's looking at me like, what's wrong with this guy? Like, why? <laughs> why does this guy want basketball shoes when Jordans are coming out? And I was like, oh, like, can I get a pair? And they're like, you haven't, you haven't worked here long enough in order to to, to get that. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't think that that exists anymore because now people just sell them, right? Like, if you worked yeah. there. If you worked there, you'd probably pull your pair and then you just sell it. You just go out online, StockX, Goat, eBay, yeah. whatever, and just and just sell them like right away just to earn 50, 60 bucks. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. I think they just fire those kids too. Once you get caught, it's, you know, I mean, like, uh, yeah, even, that's what I'm saying. Even, like, I wonder what sort of, all right, even this 15 is 15 years ago. Inventory control is way different than it is now. Mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, inventory control is such a different. Because I had a friend, I had a friend that worked at Coach, um, leather bags. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you worked at the store, you got forty percent off, and you're paying. I mean, you're talking about three hundred dollar bags. You got forty yeah. percent off. That's, that's cash, difference. bro. Yeah, that's that's. But but back then there wasn't a StockX or a Go. It was only eBay. It was yep. eBay and Craigslist, and mm -hmm. but they had people that were paid to scour those pages. To look for the resale. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And well, yeah, track for coach. Off. Yeah, man. Like you're yeah. making, you could, you could very easily make more money <laughs> by buying <laughs> stuff with your discount and reselling it than you make as you know the the cashier. For sure, for sure. All right, I gotta go here because, um, well, it's it's we've danced around it a little bit. Um, I remember when you posted something about being reunited with your with your little yeah. one and i i'm sorry man like i need to hear a little bit more about we don't need to do full like i don't expect you to cover covid china that's not why we got you on here jay right. but you what went went to visit the folks or something and type yeah like so um this is so this it's a crazy crazy story um so my wife uh grace she also works at the school with me so she teaches okay. second grade i teach fifth grade um, so she nice. went back to Taipei. Both our family is from Taipei. And, and I didn't mention this earlier. Um, but, you know, this goes back with working with my students, too, is that you never know who you're going to end up with. You never know who you're going to work for, work with, be the boss of, be your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. But um, so Grace and I were both at Taipei American School at the same time growing oh, up. Wow. Oh, cool. um, that's awesome. I've known her I've known her since I was in seventh grade um now you got we weren't me beat, like, Jay. you got me beat. We weren't together all this time but she was my senior year 
winter formal date. So, and so, but we also, like I said, we weren't together. Like after that, you know, college, we went our separate ways. Um, I didn't get reconnected with her until 2013. Okay. So, um, you know, there's, there's a whole long like period of, you know, like just, yeah. The, when people are like, oh, I've known her since this long. It's like, oh, high school sweetheart. It's like, no, 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 it's not. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. Like no, no, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Grace went back to Taipei. That's where both of our families are. Um, and she had the baby there. And okay. she was going to wait until Chinese New Year, which is the first week of Feb, um, for me to go back to Taipei. I was obviously there for when Catherine, um, our baby, was born. Uh, but okay. then I came back. I came back to once school started after winter to, to continue working. And then during Chinese New Year, I was going to fly back, pick them up, come back to Shanghai. Um, I went back first week of Feb, and I did not leave Taipei until September 2nd. Wow. So I was there for about seven months. All right. So you got to help us and we'll, <laughs> and our audience understand, you know, it doesn't sound like it was out of convenience. Where, what, what, mm-hmm. what were like the restrictions? Because, yeah, you know, we're misinformed so, regularly yeah. here. <laughs> oh, totally, totally, totally. Um, and so it's crazy because uh, I'll, I'll do a final message when I'm done with the story. So I went back and then that's right when we were hearing in Shanghai that there was like some sort of like virus going going around that yeah. it would be potentially dangerous. And so at that time, Shanghai had nothing, you know, Beijing had nothing. We were hearing rumblings of like a small city in China, Wuhan. Well, yeah, I was going to say where, how, how far away is Wuhan? Like, I don't. That's... Oh, it's like a, it's like a. I got to look it up, but I would assume it's probably like a six hour flight. (laughs) Yeah. Like, so people in the United States from one side to the absolute other. At least. (laughs) It's not not like a, it's not like a 40 minute commute. Let's just put it that way. No, 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 no. Different world. Okay. Yeah. And so we were, we were like, okay, well, it's good that we're, that I'm out of there to avoid all that right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And hopefully, you know, it'll blow over by the time we come back. Um, turns out that did not happen. Um, and, uh, Taipei did a very, cause Taipei is an, Taiwan's an Island, right? So yeah. you got to think it's easier for them to close their borders than it is for like China or North America, like, or Canada. Like you just, right. you're surrounded by water, right? So it's easy to just be like, nope, no one in, no one out. Like I can exactly. relate, Jay. I can relate. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And so I was in Taipei. We had a we had a lockdown for two weeks. Um, you know, people were scrambling for for masks and alcohol and stuff like that. But r- very soon, um, the government was the the president was like, you know, we need to we need to put restrictions on what you on people hoarding because people are hoarding toilet paper. It's just like the states, right? People yeah, are hoarding yeah, yeah. Paper people are hoarding bread and milk and all sorts of stuff. And so they put very strict regulations. They're like. Um, everyone has like an ID card in Taiwan. It's like, if you have ID cards in odd numbers, you can come Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever. If you have ID cards with even numbers, then you can come Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, pick up what you need. So, um, we had a lockdown for two weeks, uh, right when I first arrived. And then after that, it was pretty much like contact tracing, you know, mask mask mandated, but not locked. Yeah, you could leave your house, right? No lockdown. So, like, it was re- like, I feel well, for, gatherings. Would they let um, you gather? No, like, no, no, no gatherings. Um, but I mean, people were still going out, right? So it was yeah. like, kind of like a little going to the grocery store, but everyone's wearing sure. masks. And dude, yeah. it's that's similar to here. It's very yeah, similar so, to here. And so, um, but the the mask thing was mandated. You couldn't ent- enter public buildings. No. You couldn't enter like a mall, like all malls were like, you need to have a a QR code saying that you've, you know, that you're healthy and no fever. Everyone's measuring, taking your temperature with a temperature gun. Um, You got to be masked up or you just can't enter. And I think it's just a different mentality from being in the States because 
no one fought it. You know, like no well, one was like, and Jay, I'm what? sorry. You can't make me wear this. To be, you can't make me do this. To be clear, are you talking about like February, March of 2020? It was that dialed in. Like it yeah, was that it was, people it was were. Very quick. Yep. Oh, sorry to say it, but like obeying people were complying immediately. Yep. Right. 100%. Like it was just, okay. That's, and, and we don't have to talk about the why. Yeah. But that is significant. And, and Taiwan, up until maybe like three months ago, they were leading for, I think, four months without an, uh, an outbreak. Four months without any new cases, new documented cases. Oh, wow. none? None, zero. Zero new cases for like four, four or five months. Wow. Um, Jeez. I hope that um, when we get to look back at the history and, you know, I think you're being kind in the way that you're hinting around maybe some of the differences it's very, in the way that we've it's very we, diplomatic. We <laughs> Which is kind. And like this is not that kind of show, and none of us here has that information data yet. But I sure hope right. that we get to get like a real global perspective on how like obeying versus being ignorant are two drastically different things. Right. You know. And um so this is this is when it started getting um complicated was when we had a, a window of opportunity to make it back to shanghai um but that was in the the heat of when it was the worst because it had just gotten to the states mm. and so it was blowing up in the states it was around early march to mid-march it was just getting to the states and people were panicking because a lot of people during Chinese New Year left because they they had heard there was the virus in China. And so a lot of our teachers went back home to the States. Okay. Um, oh, and so like they 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 like were running from it and then all of a sudden they had to like run back. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, but by that time China had closed its borders. Oh man. So oh, so a lot of people that's what stuck. I yeah, that's what I'm like, man, Taipei was one thing, but you couldn't get back into you couldn't get back into China, right? Like so I matter. couldn't get back. So we so the, the school gave us an opportunity. They were like, you know, right now, um there there weren't as many cases in the states. It was like we were assuming it was coming, but no one could make that prediction. And so we Grace and I felt like it was the safest to just stay where we were at. We didn't choose to go back to Shanghai, um, but because of that, I got locked out. Like, so I couldn't, so we did distance learning up until, you know, June from March, from March all the way until June, about three months of distance learning. Um, our school, you know, Shanghai American School opened back in May. So like we actually oh. were, were able to open again, like things, because the way Shanghai handled it was just as, you know, efficient, like QR codes everywhere. Super aggressive right away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it cleaned yeah. it up. Really aggressive. Yeah. Cleaned it up. Um, and, you know, I know, and I know there's a lot of sentiment about like, oh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's communism there. That's why you can, you can control it. That's why, you know, they just tell you what to do and you, they say jump and you say how high kind of thing. Um, but I think in, in, in this sense, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that mentality just because when you're doing it for the safety of yourself and others i think that it's a it's a necessary kind of uh, sacrifice risk. yeah sacrifice exactly sacrifice, not right sacrifice were they, te that, were they testing a lot so if you don't mind me yep. asking or for our listeners what what was the qr code qualifying for the qr code what yeah that so um in shanghai now even even to this day um like we went to a mall last night you had to show a QR code and the QR code shows that you've been in Shanghai for four, for the last 14 days. So it's basically contact tracing. If you show yeah. green, that means you've been in the city of Shanghai for the past 14 days, um, which means that you haven't gone out to a high risk area because Shanghai is considered low risk. Um, so if I were to like fly to, you know, a different city, my QR code would change because it would show that I am not currently in Shanghai anymore. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, so different. Uh, yeah, That's, but not dude. I, and I'm again, I hate to keep being like, huh, huh, dude. It, and the only reason why we do it in Hawaii is because we can, it's an Island. 
they can right. very much but it's i mean you need a qr code to land in hawaii now mm -hmm. and yeah. it's the exact same thing like the the biggest thing here jay is you need to be tested and prove you're clear within 72 hours of right. getting here but yeah like just the general what you're describing as very very um almost almost militarized level of listen everyone give up a little bit or else we're all gonna have to give up everything mm -hmm. that right. very much in hawaii too man that that was yeah. from the get-go what do you mean we can't go to the beaches well we can't go to the beaches that's what we're yeah doing. yeah, <laughs> like, okay. yeah. Okay. and so and so in june um no uh yeah around uh june time you know the school was we were missing a lot of teachers and so they grace has a um a, a taiwan passport she's Taiwan passport, so does the baby. The baby has both US and Taiwan, but okay. Taiwan is able to travel between Shanghai, uh, China and Taiwan. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. And okay. so they were able to fly back. And so we sat down and we talked about it. We're like, hey, we've been living, like we have family in Taiwan, but we weren't living at home. We were living at an Airbnb. It's oh. just, we wanted our own space and yeah. you know, we just didn't wanna be um, a nuisance to anyone. So we did our own thing for seven months uh six months and and so you know that was an ex an expense that no one could account for yeah and that's gilligan's we, island man yeah that is not fun i mean i bet it wasn't fun after a couple of weeks i cannot yeah. imagine so sure. we we sat down and we talked and we like okay so how is this going to work and they're like well um we both agreed that grace should go back because she could start the year and she could start working um and and then catherine could go back and actually like be at home for like the home that we provided for her before she was yeah, even born the plan yeah we, we had bought duplicates of so much stuff because we she was only supposed to be a Weeks, month old maybe. before we brought yeah, yeah was, that's what before I we brought her back and all her baby stuff like she outgrew everything like her you know crib that we bought her didn't fit anymore and all this stuff and and so we were like okay you know what we probably just have to buckle down and and be separated for a little bit just so you guys can live comfortably again. Mm -hmm. um, so they left in June, back to Shanghai. Um, yeah, major props to to Grace for holding it down because she had to bring the baby through quarantine. You know, she had to like do all that stuff. A, a five month old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to a new mom, like yeah. oh man, yeah, yeah. No, that's a uh, props. Props. Well, much deserved. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And so, and so I w moved back home and I was in Taiwan by myself, you know, with my family, obviously from June until September when they finally opened the borders and I got a visa and I was able to go back. Did you move out of the Airbnb and move back in with your folks? Immediately. Like the same day. That <laughs> yeah. Right. The same day that I took them to the airport. I'm like, I'm out of here. I cannot do this anymore. No. Yeah. It's, it's not fun living in someone else's place, you know, like, don't get me wrong. I bet it wasn't awesome living in under, under your parents' roof again, either. No, but at weird. least like there's, that. there's like a semblance of comfort. There's moments of comfort, right? When I you're mean, in that foreign spot after yeah. hotel room after three days, to me is like the most depressing place in the world. <laughs> I mean, it was, it, I had flashes of that scene in, um, in, uh, Wedding Crashers when Will Ferrell's like, Ma, me loaf. <laughs> yeah. Ma. All right. Hey, we all revert. That's why it's so damn funny because we all revert, man. We all revert. It is It yeah. is so true about how quickly you revert back to like a, it's like it's almost terrible. like a, a part of your childhood like comes back. You may not like or even ever want to see no, that part of your no. childhood again, but when you spend extended time with your parents, especially in their domicile, it brings that kind of you know I mean, strange it, thing back. I had never played so much video games in my life before. <laughs> and at you the revert. age of 30, you revert. 30 yeah, well, not since you were yeah. not since Going you were fourteen. It. You know, not since you were fourteen in that you same space. You uncovered your Sega Genesis out of the uh, out of the <laughs> yeah. closet thing, blowing yeah, NES out. cartridges and stuff like that. Right. Right. Oh <laughs> man. Oh, well, I hate that this episode has to come to an end. This is like, oh, this has been man. such a cool and casual time to talk to you um, about like the experience through that. Um, I'm, I'm glad that we got to fit the the, the, the end part in. And um, 
I appreciate you coming through on the, it's, it's weird when uh, Mike introduced you to me, he said, this is like your reciprocal is like the, uh, the Pacific version of you. <laughs> it's like your doppelganger. <laughs> the tattoo. Yep. The doppelganger, the tattoos, oh, yeah. the sneakers, kind of the coaching. I also, uh, I'm not coaching currently because of COVID, um, same thing, got to find a place to coach, but like all that same thing. So it's so cool. Um, and I hope we get to welcome you back sometime, man. This is, you, no, I would, cool. you know what, um, uh, Michael, I, I really appreciate you reaching out. Um, you know, uh, I've had the opportunity of a couple of podcasts being like, Hey, um, we would love to talk to you. And then like them radio silence for like six months. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like that. Sure. You know, um, yeah. but you know, he sent like this, like really long email and I was like, Whoa, okay. These guys. And then I, I went ahead and I listened to a couple of episodes, um, oh, on, on the website. Appreciate um, that. definitely listen to the sneakerhead one. <laughs> um and and i was like man i was like these guys are like they just seem like really genuine people and um i'm glad that you know ryan i found my counterpart in uh detroit um yeah but yeah i mean i i really appreciate being able to to get on uh with you guys and you know cuz i'm not i'm a sneakerhead but i'm but i do like that's my second thing you know what I mean? Sure. Like, like I'm a teacher, I'm a coach. Like I, I don't, I don't do social media for a living. I don't sell shoes. I don't, I'm not uh, like always about that. And I, and I hate to, to sound like those sneakerheads where it's like, I hate that term sneakerhead. I'm not a sneakerhead. I'm an OG, right? Like I don't, yeah, uh, no, like, no, no. I get no, off my a, lawn. Uh, no, bro. You're, <laughs> you're a grown. Lawn, uh, sorry. And this isn't to diss the sneakerheads out there, but like you're, you're a grown up with a with a full ass life and you know sneakers are part of it and sure you got a lot of passion and excitement and you know love through that world but i i don't want to put you in any corner jay like what you've shared with us today is like it'd be foolish for anybody to try i i honestly man like this came through i had some butterflies i had some butterflies before today's interview but it, it just you came through so sincerely and just exactly exactly as as I kind of expected. And that's very rare to to actually connect with the person in real life that you met in social media, literally thousands and thousands of miles away. So I'm uh, I'm not patting myself on the back at all here. I'm just glad I did reach out to you. And I just feel real, real fortunate that you that you reach back and you know you took that you took that olive branch bro it's it's been it's great to what meet we get you. to do on the show is yeah. to you know one of the worst things you could do to a human is generalize him or her it really is and so i i'm really glad that you added that last part about the sneakerhead part right because even if you go back and you listen to this right now and this is the first convention not episode you listen to um, because you're part of Jay's crew that, that, you know, picked up on it and listened mm-hmm. to an episode. Um, one of the things that we've always fought through the years is the idea. And when we select the guests and we get to find people and meet people is that the idea that you fit this like piece because of something that is an outward view of you. Um, and a right. lot of times that does end up with people who have these cool social media followings, even greater than Mike or mine. You know, like that's never been part of either of our things. It certainly isn't a part of like the bigger, bigger part of the show, but the show is pretty successful just because I think people search the terms often about like what we talk about, um, right. which is inspirational stuff. And it's, it's kind of like getting into something that like doesn't fit the mold and, and, and getting past like the idea that humans don't fit molds and like why they don't fit molds and what that means to people. Um, because I think so many of us, you know, it's probably a mistake to know you as the teacher with the sneakers. It's just, yeah. you know, it's, it's, um, it's something that, you know, I think if we could all as humans take a little bit more time to do, um, we're better for it. So thank you so much. I know you're headed into your week here. Um, so I'm so happy yeah. to, to hear that. I wish that. it was Sunday still. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got to go at like a, a crack of dawn flight to Minneapolis where the uh, temp is going to be below what, what anybody wants to do. So yeah. before we do cut out here though, let's, let's, let's do this. Um, we just talked about social media. Give us that, that, that uh, handle one more time. And if I want to follow you and, and why I would follow you. Um, Cause I think yeah. it's important. Um, You're not a sneaker plug. That's, that's the thing, you well, know, but for sure. more than that. 
And I have Jay, Jay, one more thing. We, because like I said, my wife is a teacher. We talk about education and, you know, the various, Mm -hmm. like your path is, is a dream path for a lot of educators, man. So I also want to say to like, if you don't mind sharing some of your contact info, I mean, you're where a lot of people really want to be, bud. So for sure, no pressure. For sure. Um, yeah. So, uh, my IG handle is, uh, Shanghai soul, uh, Shanghai, Shanghai, China, uh, S O L E. And, um, yeah, follow me if, uh, if you like shoes, obviously, but not, not to get a biased opinion on anything, right? Like, um, you know, like I said, I, I, I do it for fun. I do it because it's something I like to share. Um, if you're interested in what's happening out in, in China and in Asia, cause I, you know, when we were able to travel a lot, I would post like where in Asia. Cause I mean, I used to travel to Tokyo a lot. Um, you know, I'm always in Taipei. So I'm always showing things from, you know, different, different countries. Uh, we travel for basketball. So I'm always trying to visit, like see sneaker shops uh, nice. during our travels and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I know people in the States are worldwide are just really curious about that. Um, and if you have any questions about uh, teaching, definitely um, reach out because I know a lot of people are still like a little intimidated by it, you know, teaching, like being in a foreign country, um, you know, being away from family, um, you know, I think the decision was a lot easier for me and my wife just because our family is in Asia, right? So sure. it, in, in some ways, we moved closer to home yeah. coming out here. Um, so, but I mean, uh, it's it's a very awesome opportunity to open your eyes to traveling in different cultures, uh, whether you're in Asia or Europe or South America or the Middle East. Um, it's an awesome experience. But you can hit me up at uh, Shuang, S-H-U-A-N-G dot j a y at gmail.com and i can uh, pass along some of those uh iss links and i'm sure michael has contacts to those too and <laughs> yeah but yeah just uh I, I look forward to talking to you guys again man i really appreciate the opportunity to talk more about sneakers which is something i don't really get to do that often Same. this this will not this guaranteed will not be the last time we chat jay so on that note i'm gonna let you uh Go kick another week's ass. Wait, yeah, I said that right. Yeah. And uh, yeah. thank you, Jay. Really, really appreciate it, bud. We'll be in touch. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Mick, 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 Mick D is all business. I, I, I know Mike got my back. Skrilla on the track, track, track. Convention not. What that means is unconventional Been in the game of you So comprehend what I'ma give to you Cause in the instant You can turn your hustle to an institute I can't stop, I'm on top Because I'm Convention not Immaculate how I be rapping it When I be spitting You know that you loving it Covered it, nothing above it So you could go run with it Now let's get back to it Back to the basics Carving out spaces Practice patience For situations and all vibrations I want all my eyes can see And I'ma beat you there I aim for variety Like a sneaker head I'm game ready Keeping that thing steady Climbing over the dragon Now who wanna bang with me Will you grow and change with me Go through the same with me For those that don't grow They know to remain shifty I'm working with all I got So when you see me You know what I'm about